Is, mm -hmm. is it doing it? Okay. Okay. All right. All righty. Well, as we are uh, live streaming, we did call everything to order and do all of that kind of fun stuff just <laughs> for record keeping sake. All right. And on from there, I am looking for a motion to not necessarily excuse, but uh, Katie's going to be a little late tonight. Mary, do you know if we need to excuse her then or do we just... I think you do because if if we get to something like consent agenda that needs action, okay, we need to excuse them like, before that. This is my first like late member yeah. and not just gone. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> you got here. Okay, then I would take yeah. a motion. Motion to excuse Katie Krause from tonight's meeting. Second. So that was Liz and then Carrie seconded. Thank you all. And uh, like I said, her, her babysitter is uh, down in Bellevue and. The roads were not as passable as she thought they would be. Oh, so <laughs> she'll be here shortly. Um, please call the vote. Mrs. Richards. Aye. Mrs. Huff. Aye. Ms. Rorty. Uh, aye. Sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Coomer. <laughs> like, we're good. You won. Mrs. Coomer. Aye. Then Mrs. Willie. Aye. Good. Excellent. Thank you for motion passes. Um, I think actually you were supposed to call the oh, okay. meeting to order. I, you were rolling. <laughs> All right. I actually think this might have been you. Okay. So this is the one time a year uh, where uh, we have a, a vacancy that sits in the presidency. Um, we have one order of business here, and then once we have our next president nominated, uh, seconded, and approved, um, then I'll step aside, and whoever that person is, uh, they'll be our next president for uh, the next full school year. So, or excuse me, for the next calendar year. So at this time, I would accept any nominations for uh, president for the Ralston um, Board of Education. I nominate Robin Richards to serve as president of the Ralston Board of Education and ask that nominations cease. Oh, give me a second. Oh, she still ceases. Let me second. Second. There we go. Thank you, Liz and Mary. So we have a motion and a second with Liz and Mary, and then a motion to uh, cease nominations. There we go. Maybe it's one we need to vote. That's okay. It's all supposed to be part of the Okay. I think we're ready to call for the vote. Mrs. Richards. I think I abstain. You have to abstain. Okay. <laughs> I think so. Mrs. Huff. <laughs> Why don't we do this once a year, y'all? <laughs> Ms. Rorty. Aye. Mrs. Coomer. Aye. And Mrs. Willie. Aye. Well, thank you, board. Another year in front of you will be a good time. And now I get to speak at graduation, which I really love because <laughs> my kid graduates. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, and then, of course, we're going to move into nominations for vice president. And I would nominate Liz Kumaro to serve as vice president for another year. Second. And I would cease for nominations to stop. So I'm not sure if we approve each one of these as we go or if we do the next three. I think we do. I looked at last year and we did a vote for each one of them. Cool. All right. All right. Please Very call. Good. So Mrs. Huff. Aye. Mrs. Richards. Aye. Mrs. Willie. Aye. Ms. Rorty. Aye. Mrs. Kimru. Thank you. I didn't get a cheat sheet. Oh, you want to just abstain? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said nay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds like motion passes. Yes. Motion cool. Passed. Okay. Yes. We were, we were doing something else. I thought. Oh, yes. Motion okay. Passed. Yes. 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 <laughs> Excellent. So the next one we would take is a nomination for secretary, please. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Samantha Willie for secretary of the Ralston Board of Education. Second. Oh. And ask that nomination cease. Second. All right, please call the vote. Ms. Rorty. Aye. Ms. Oh, sorry. Mrs. Richards. Aye. Mrs. Coomer. Aye. Mrs. Willie. Upstate. And Mrs. Huff. Aye. Excellent. All right, last one. Treasurer, I take a motion, please. I'd like to motion and nominate uh, Mary Rorty for continuing in her position as treasurer for the Austin Public School District. Second. And then ask that uh, further nominations for secretary. Second. All right, please call the vote. Mrs. Kumru. Aye. Ms. Rorty. Abstain. Yes. Mrs. Huff. Aye. Mrs. Willie. Aye. Mrs. Richards. Aye. 
trust that. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, board. Everybody, uh, <coughs> thank you for your service, and we're always uh, very grateful for all the work you guys do, not just as uh, the officers, but all the board members. <coughs> so thank you, everyone. All right. Now we got the rigmarole done. I believe we move into public comment. Do we have any public comments this evening? Nope. Excellent. <laughs> We do not. I will hop over that one then and straight into the consent agenda board. I would take a motion, please. I move that uh, we adopt the consent agenda items as presented. Second. That was Liz motioned and Samantha seconded. And please call the vote. Ms. Rorty? Aye. Mrs. Richards? Aye. Mrs. Coomer? Aye. Mrs. Willie? Aye. Mrs. Huff? Aye. Thank you. And now we are going to head into uh, Board Development and Communications. This is our Ms. Rorty. Why don't we start on your end of the table tonight? Okay, I'm getting wild. I was just trying to think what all, what all has transpired since we last <laughs> no, met. I'm sorry. So, um, um, I, don't, I don't think a lot. I mean, I think... Um, just, it was great to, to see all the holiday programs and um, and the play up at the high school. Um, what's the name? I can't recall. <laughs> but uh, she kills monsters. She fights monsters. Yes, she, she, she does. does. Yeah. Monsters. There we go. She kills there monsters. we go. Yes, yeah, so it was really interesting. So um, uh, the way that they did yeah. it because they had to set up on stage and everything. So um, that was interesting. Um, I did want to comment on some of the resignations mm -hmm. that we just received as well. So. You know, um, it's amazing, I think, to see, you know, some of our <coughs> teachers that have been here you know, 25 and 30 years, you know, and I know it's a big decision for them to, um, you know, as they move to the next uh, the next uh, thing in their life. So, um, you know, whether that's moving out of state or, um, you know, retiring or, or what that might be. But, um, you know, just really want to thank all of them for their service because um, that's, you know, the list, uh, I know we have retirements every year, and um, but that's quite a list of um, uh, Deanna Johnson, uh, Lynn, I'm not going to pronounce her last name right. Mahonic. Mahonic. Um, uh, Jody Krause. Um, you know, I just think that the combined number of years of the people um, resigning just says a lot about the district, and there were some very heartfelt letters written as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank them all for their service. So, if I may just add in, they're not all leaving the ship because you have a new superintendent. This is, this is, this is a job right. paper, voluntary separation. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's yeah, yeah. Have as many as what you have. Yes. Right now, so. Yeah, yeah, we understand that. So, um, but yeah, it's just, it's, um, you know, heart, heart felt to see that they've stayed here this long and, and love the district so much. Mm -hmm. it's just great. Excellent. Ms. Krause, we'll let you get settled in a little bit before we yeah, uh, come at you with board updates. We'll let Ms. Kumru go next. Do we have to vote for her? I was going to give her just a second, let you oh. update, and then we'll okay. vote her in um, Yeah, I uh, echo everything um, Mary said about uh, the play. The play was wonderful, and uh, within 45 minutes, they had to, there was a one act day. They had to move all the set in, set up do the play, and then take everything off the stage. It was like a practice for their competition. Oh, sure, one X. So I, I've never I've never seen that before, so it was really kind of fun. Uh, they were very good. Um, also, thank you very much, everyone, all the teachers who are, are uh, retiring. Thank you for your service. I appreciate all you've done. We're going to miss you. Um, that provided a lot of, you know, bench strength and wisdom. For, for all those years. Um, I'll be going to the NASB Board of Directors meeting this Saturday. Um, so if there's anything that you need me to say to them, <laughs> let me know. Um, also, uh, before the end of the year, I established a, a scholarship fund for uh, Ralston High School seniors who want to study science um, in honor of my late friend and brother. Thank you, Liz. I didn't think I... Okay. Well, you never know what's going to you. I get you. Uh, first scholarship uh, 
will be available this May. That's incredible. Thank you. It also supports storytellers. <laughs> oh, of course it does. I miss that I last love part, it. Liz, right? It supports storytellers. Oh. <laughs> you come to the district to tell stories. That's great. Great. Well, thank you very, very much for that. We really appreciate how much you always get to Ralston, but this will be a continuing legacy. Nice tribute to yes, you. Yes, it, it's yeah. an endowed scholarship, so keep on getting <laughs> yeah. more and more and more. So. All right, I don't know what the official words I need to say to get Katie as part of the meeting. Does anybody know? Usually I just make a note at the time she arrived, which I put 6.08, I think. All right. Oh, okay. Let right. the record reflow, the, uh, no, reflect that Mrs. Do. Krauss has joined All us. Right. You got <laughs> it. Yeah. All right. Katie, what did you do in the last month or so while we've oh, been geez. apart? Uh, not too much with with school things. I actually probably was out late. I had a little boy whose mom works remotely at my house all day today with the snow day again. So he was at us yesterday and today because I told her, I said, oh, if you ever work remote, let me know. I'm on maternity leave. And then she's like, hey. <laughs> what do you usually <laughs> say something? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that was great. Um, so, yeah, so I... Uh, as a fellow parent, we know how snow days are, but definitely the best interest today. It was very chilly. We went to, we, yeah, we did went out this morning. It was very cold, so yeah. cannot imagine walking more than about ten seconds around in that in that weather. So good calls um, on the district for those snow days last couple weeks. Um, so yeah, not not too much with school board things. Just lots of things with family and trying to get ready to get back to work and all that kind of thing. So. Um, love seeing the Facebook updates of all the of all the schools though. We are, I'm a big Facebooker, so I see all the Facebook updates pretty much every day, and really appreciate that social media um, presence that that all of our schools have. Um, and again, same to echo everyone else too. Um, I really enjoyed reading the letters from the teachers that are resigning. We'll miss them. All the staff that resigned, we'll miss them. But it was nice to read those letters. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Mrs. Huff. What you been up to? Well, it feels like forever, but I did help with the uh, mock interviews in December, so that's always one of my favorite events. Um, Mr. Reeves and I have to apologize, I can't remember the other business teacher's Susie. name. Oh, it's Tom. It could have been. It could have been. But, uh, yep, I always enjoy speaking with um, the students and uh, various levels of preparedness, but uh, <laughs> that's also part of learning how to get a job. So, uh, And then I was able to go to Wildwood's open house, and um, Mr. Buckingham was giving a very nice tour to someone else I didn't know, um, but the teachers seemed so excited, the students were excited, and uh, didn't take them very long to decorate and remove some of that sterile feeling. So, yes. <laughs> um, but one of the coolest things I did notice is that most of the rooms had various levels of lighting, yeah. and that was like a big thing that you talked about. And so I was like, you know, this really does make a huge difference. So, yeah, good, good choice with that decision. But other than that, it's been very quiet. Awesome. Well, with your background, we really appreciate you doing those interviews. I, I, I can't imagine the great feedback you're giving the kids, so thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, Sam, I'm not sure that's one I could pull off. So thank you. Mrs. Willing. All right. Also, it feels like it's been forever since we've seen each other, so mm -hmm. wonderful to see everyone's faces tonight. Um, Wildwood Open House, I was not able to go, but our last board meeting being held there, that is a beautiful school. Um, I just love how open and big everything. It was hard for me in my mind to envision like putting walls and it not being smaller. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, yeah. Jason. Yeah. So I hope that you got like good feedback from oh, yeah. family and, and students as they're walking through the buildings. Um, also, there is a blood drive that the high school is going to be hosting January 26th. So if you're in your blood and donating that, I would encourage you to sign up for that. I can send you guys all the QR code if you're interested. Um, and then I am looking forward to the legislative uh, conference on Monday. You know, in previous years, that's been very interesting, very informative. It's a yes. wonderful platform for us to sit down, speak with our senators, and kind of get a good understanding of what's going on at that level. <coughs> so looking forward to that on Monday. Um, that's all for my update. Awesome. Well, I think everybody covered just about everything. Um, yeah, I know it's been a lot of snow days and a lot of kind of worry and a lot of stress and... It's going to be okay. 
everybody's better safe than out in this nonsense. So it's going to be okay. And hopefully we won't have a lot more snow days. We're just going to cross our fingers and do the best we can. All right, y'all. Board member update is over. That is it. Officially. Superintendent's report. Hey, just a couple things to address there, and, and thanks so much for sharing out. It, it's been over a month since we've met last, and uh, we've had quite a bit happen, even though we did have some downtime there in the middle. Um, I'd like to recognize Dawson Schmidt. Uh, she was a recipient of the Cox uh, Character Ed grant. Uh, mm -hmm. She is our uh, current um, Ralston Middle School PE teacher, or one of the two that we have over there. So she wrote a grant on her own uh, with Cox, and, and she has some money coming her way to continue to do um, some character education pieces with our students. So in addition to their physical well-being, we're working on their, on their character as well. And as you know, if you've had any kids that age, there's lots of character in them. A yeah. so, um, couple other things of note. Um, I was, was able to get out and see quite a few things before we had the holiday break. Um, got to watch our boys and girls basketball teams play down in Nebraska City. Um, boys got a win. Girls were ahead at halftime. Uh, which was the first time this year, but didn't quite come away with a win. Um, so got to see them play in their hol holiday tournament. Got to go to uh, Ralston Middle School, both the vocal and the band, two separate dates for that. Uh, so that was a, a neat experience. Both of those two instructors, you can tell by the amount of enrollment that they have uh, for those programs, are doing a great job for us down there. So as far as the music, music education piece looks, uh, the future looks pretty bright with the number of kids that we've got down there. And it was always kind of a... Uh, a uh, indicator for me as a middle school principal uh, when I'd attend a, a concert, if I could tell what the song was, they're doing a great job. So I could tell <laughs> what the song was, so they're doing a great job. A um, couple other things to note, uh, we've had several rounds of negotiations. Uh, we'll talk about that tonight when we update the board in executive session. Uh, but I think we're at a spot where we're at a tentative agreement, uh, pending board and pending our legal approval. So that's good news for us. And then finally, uh, again, thanks to Carrie for coming out to uh, the Wildwood Open House. Great experience. Uh, what would you say? A couple hundred people? Oh, I least. would say, uh, yeah, at least. Yeah. And it was not warm that night. Um, mm -hmm. So we had people come out and they were just, they were over the moon with the way the school turned out. Um, we had a lot of excitement in Meadows. This one, I think, might have been even a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, just because people were, were um, you know, really impressed with the way the building turned out. So, again, thanks to the board for allowing us to do that. None of this stuff happens without board approval to have that initial push to take this to our people and to have them approve that bond. It's a very sizable thing, and, and uh, we're starting to see some of the results of it and, and very, very complimentary. So, um, okay, with that, are we ready? We'll go ahead and jump right into district Let's financial going. report. <coughs> yeah, take a look here at um, December's bills, actually, is what we're reviewing. Just a couple things I want to draw the board's attention to. Uh, somewhat same old story, but in some ways we've made some leave some headway here. If you look at the receipts for last month, we're actually a hundred thousand dollars more than we were this time last year, and then our disbursements were actually one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars less. So if you look at the bottom of the book balance, um, we gained some ground there. Last month, the difference between last year's book balance and this year's book balance was about three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Currently now, after December, it's at $134,000. So again, those numbers are starting to get a little bit closer. So if we go to page two, we can kind of see why that is. Uh, we're still looking at that motor vehicle tax um, lagging behind where it was last year. So hopefully everyone that got a car over the holidays, like the commercials always show with the big bow on the driveway, will be able right. to, you know, filing taxes on that. We'll see that number go up. Um, but otherwise, if you look at the bottom, overall, we're still about 2% difference between where we were last year. Um, but the good news is, is on the disbursement side, um, and again, we're supposed to be at about 33% kind of spent by this point. If you look at the bottom of that disbursements, you can see that numbers are pretty consistent across last year and this year, and we're actually below that 33%. So in reality, we don't have a spending problem, we just have at this point a revenue problem, but just a reminder that revenue doesn't come in as consistently as like the MUD and OBPD bill, so we'll see those numbers fluctuate. On the next page, for the building fund, uh, I'm not going to touch much on that because Mr. Buckingham is going to address all the stuff that we're doing with that, but um, just to keep the board aware that, that that fund continues to get used for the projects, just like we discussed with Bob and whatnot, and on the bond fund, 
There was a payment made that won't actually show up on our sheets until next month. Um, but you can see in there, I think the payment was about $2.6 million, and we have uh, the money prepared in the bank for that. So next month is when you actually see that taken out of there. For the lunch program, we finally had some federal money show up. Uh, so that actually made that number flip from a negative. Uh, it was negative $360,000 last month. And as you can see now, this month we're actually positive, um, pretty close to that same amount. So that federal funding taken in sure helped that program. So why this is important, um, just as a reminder to the board, every year we're supposed to come back and reevaluate what our meal prices are. And there's, there's a certain amount that the federal government wants you to hit in order to have that supplement piece that comes in there. One of the things that allow you uh, the ability to not have to raise your prices if you so choose as a district is what is your balance in your fund in, in December. So where we end with a positive balance, that's really the only requirement for, we'll call it a shelter, uh, for lack of a better term, to have that shelter to where you don't have to increase the prices if you don't choose to do so, which we have done the last couple of years. Having this positive balance in December is pretty huge. So. And on the last page, uh, under that depreciation fund, sometimes numbers can be deceiving or not as exciting as they are to Buck and me, but that is your truck you're looking at. That's your new snow plow truck that uh, I picked up, got license plates on, and I don't think it's been back in the parking lot probably since. Plowing, 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 plowing. I would say that probably got here right in the right time, didn't it? That's also what's inspired our name, the Ralston Plows competition that the kiddos are going to do, yeah. so we're going to kind of promote that purchase to the uh, community uh, with that process of engaging our kids. So, great. All right. Yeah. Uh, any other questions for uh, Dr. Reed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, it's uh, you know, like uh, having that mother duckling watch the little duckling go in the water and swim. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard no out of Aaron's office a bunch of times, and it's been great. <laughs> 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 And it's still working on him, but it's not working. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is very true. So timing is so much in life. Um, we're happy to be graced tonight with Joe Cobo's presence, and you're the next person up on the agenda. So I, I don't know if that's crazy. <laughs> well, he's coming up too. I do want to make sure we thank the people that plow the oh, absolutely parking lots. And another important thing about our schools that is that when there are snow days and it's not like negative thirty degrees. Um, a lot of our schools are used for sledding hills. Yes. So, I mean, there were like 20 cars in the Seymour parking lot one day we went over there. So, yeah. thank you yes. to the folks that do that, for sure. And, and just so everybody knows, we push our own snow here. Um, yeah. So, yeah. it's it's our staff, it's our guys that we take off other jobs when, when it snows. Our custodians are the ones that do the sidewalks and things. And then our, our grounds and maintenance guys are the ones that are actually out pushing uh, pushing the driveways and getting those out and open. So. They've been putting in quite a few hours here, and uh, you know, we're, we're really happy with the work they put in. Fortunately, we had one slip the other day and it broke his ankle, so, oh, no. so we're one down right now. So, if anybody wants to drive a snowplow, well, <laughs> I mean, I'll drive I, it. I actually use a plow at the farm. I've experienced snowplower. Is that a license? <laughs> CDL? No. <laughs> Evening, Joe. Good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, uh, albeit about a week and a day later than, than the original <laughs> plan, but um, but it's a, a pleasure to be with you. Uh, just a couple things that, that I would update on uh, from a process standpoint where we sit in the legislative session. So um, the legislature convened on the 3rd of January, and um, immediately what I would say immediately... <laughs> did a lot of work um, and uh, elected a new chairman of the executive board, a new vice chair of the executive board, and uh, then proceeded to introduce uh, about, uh, I think, 70 new bills on the very first day, which is a large number on that first day. Uh, but also significantly, what we saw um, that first day was we saw about uh, eight members and a committee designate priority bills. And I will tell you that in my years of doing this, uh, I have uh, seen an occasional one, maybe two uh, bills get designated that very first day because they generally are those bills that a senator 
uh, did an enormous amount of work on during the interim, and they want to make sure it's got a shot. And so they'll designate it in order to get it so that the speaker can put it up relatively soon. Uh, we saw eight. So far, we've had 18 members uh, of the legislature prioritize their bills for this session. Why is that significant? And I think that's significant because um, this week um, we are debating the rules changes. And the rules changes, uh, as many of you from may have noticed from uh, news coverage, uh, the legislature, uh, the rules committee uh, last week, um, uh, when, yes, it was snowing or getting ready to, <laughs> to drop a lot of snow on us, was getting ready to have their, their hearings on those rules changes. And when they did that, uh, there were about 30 plus rules changes that were introduced. Um, the committee uh, took all of those under advisement after the hearing uh, and on Tuesday morning conducted an executive session. The hope was that they would advance a rules package um, that would uh, be reflective of the committee's work. Um, that did not happen. Uh, and so uh, with the hope that they would debate at that on last Tuesday, that didn't happen. Uh, and so they met again Wednesday morning, and, and as many of you saw from coverage, uh, they uh, advanced some additional rules changes, which included changes to the cloture vote, uh, how the cloture vote is calculated, uh, as well a limitation on the number of bills that a senator can introduce in a given year, uh, the secret ballot change uh, with regards to committee chair elections. So they didn't just stick with those what were sort of housekeeping uh, as, as indications had been uh, that they were gonna stick with sort of a package that Speaker Arch had introduced to the committee, uh, but rather um, they added some, some more controversial ones. So uh, when that happened, they commenced debate uh, on rules changes last Thursday uh, and then uh, wrapped up around five o'clock so that everybody could get home and be socked in for <laughs> a day or two. Um, and um, then recommence debate uh, today on the rules package. And uh, the speaker also announced this morning that it's his intent that the rules will be done this week. Uh, they will be done on Friday, uh, and that it's his intent that um, to give um, 27 more hours of debate to uh, the rules, and that 19 of those hours will be focused on the... <laughs> The, the five rule changes that he introduced <laughs> and the remaining nine will be the remaining nine hours will be on those more controversial. Um, and so where they're at on Friday when they're done, they're done. Uh, and we'll move on from from the rules debate uh, planning to commence debate next Wednesday or excuse me next Monday morning. Uh, and then they will do what we all know is the normal process morning debate followed by afternoon committee hearings during the week until they dispose of all the committee uh, hearings, and then they'll move on to full day debates around the first week of March. So why that, why going back to why that priority designation is significant? And I think that's because what you're gonna see starting next week is, a, is the legislature focus on those priority bills. And that will be what is the focus for the next few weeks, I think until we get to the budget package, which is scheduled to be up like, the second week in March. So I think what you're gonna see is a very narrow, focused debate only on, um, on those priority bills. You have heard me refer to the funnel or the filter that always happens around that first or second week in March because priority bills are designated and that sort of thing. We can presume that that filter or that funnel happened, is happening even as we speak right now with what senators are choosing to designate as priorities. Some of those bills that have been designated priorities are, are bills that, that um, are relatively non-controversial. Um, there are some uh, that are, will be more controversial, but maybe not so much to us because they deal with things like dark fiber and things like that, and it'll be an industry fight. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, the really focused. I think we do have um, some of the bills that are being uh, prioritized are are going to take time. Um, you know, Senator Kalth on the very first day prioritized the sports and spaces bill. Um, presuming the bill, the votes exist to get that out of committee, that means that that will be her, that's her priority bill 
It doesn't automatically grant it to the floor. It has, still has to be voted out by the committee, but it pretty much guarantees debate on the floor. Um, there are some under, other industry bills, the, the two-man crew bill and others that have been prioritized. They're going to be the focus. But the speaker has indicated that the first bills prioritized that will be debated this year are going to be focused on, on uh, uh, changes to the procurement law, uh, the state procurement law. I think we can all remember back a few years ago, we had the incident with, um, um, oh gosh, St. Francis and others that led to some rather significant criticism. Uh, speaker Arch, um, even before he was speaker, took on that issue of saying, okay, what went wrong and how do we fix it? And so it's literally taking them that long to kind of get this thing uh, moving along to that. So that's his personal priority bill. That will be the first bill up. Uh, we also do some stuff on Medicaid uh, uh, fraud and um, um, massage therapists and genetic protection of genetic uh, uh, information, 23andMe and those types of, to make sure that those can't be sold and things like that. Those will take some time. Uh, and so then we will get into those remainder, the remainder of those priority bills. So I think that that's the significance of us seeing 18 priority bills already designated this session. Um, that's roughly 18% of the total number of priority bills that can be prioritized in any given session. So we're at day, we're at day nine, and we've already got 18% of the priority bills designated. I think that's significant. Um, also significant, two things that I would just say that we have coming up. Uh, day 10 is tomorrow. Uh, under Nebraska legislative rules, bills can only be introduced in the first 10 days. So tomorrow is the last day. If tomorrow is any, uh, anything like today with bill introductions, we will have another 100 bills or so uh, dropped like we had today. So um, we will... So guess what I get to go do after I'm done tonight, after I'm done with y'all is I get to go home and read bills tonight. So um, how many are they up to? Like, what's that? How many are they up to? Like four or five hundred? Uh, so they should like with those, and I'm gonna use rough numbers. Uh, they should be around four hundred and thirty so far. Um, I know they were into the twelve hundreds um, today, um, and so I, I would suspect we'll get another hundred or so tomorrow. Uh, and I say that strictly because I know of things that are floating around up there that just haven't come down, hadn't come down yet. So sure. I fully expect that we'll probably be facing down another hundred bills. Our law clerk loves that because he's the one who gets to write the summaries. Uh, and so he loves the idea of having a hundred bills to read in a night. <laughs> so we, won't, we, we, won't, we won't haze him. We won't. <laughs> make him do it all tonight. But um, but that's a little bit about sort of, and then the second thing I would say coming up this week is the governor's state of the state. And that will be on Thursday uh, at 10 a.m. Significance of that is two things. One, we can fully expect that he will unveil his official uh, tax plan on Thursday during his speech. So we fully <laughs> expect to see uh, more details on that. And usually uh, the bills that implement his tax plan will be introduced right after he's done with his, his speech. Uh, that's kind of the normal process. Second thing is his budget adjustments. So um, the significance of that is that uh, while we have a budget in place, the governor will bring his second, uh, his mid-biennial budget adjustments uh, in that uh, to the legislature this year. And um, I think we've all seen that, you know, his goal is to find another billion and a half dollars in, in to buy down property taxes. Um, I think it'll be, I think we'll see at least him get part of the way there by snagging some money out of out of current uh, programs and, and things around the state. So I, I fully expect that to, to come on, on Thursday. With that though, however, um, there are some things, some bills that I just wanna bring to the board's attention. Uh, that um, that we will obviously discuss a little further tomorrow uh, in uh, the ledge committee we'll discuss uh, further tomorrow but um, a few that I just want to bring to your attention that that maybe um, that we'll discuss further tomorrow um, one bill senator uh, and these are actually have been scheduled for public hearing next week LB 1010 Senator Walls's bill uh, provides for transfers to the to the education future fund uh, for reimbursements for special education. Uh, I would note that if you all recall, um, last year the Education Future Fund was created. This is the billion dollars in state funding. 
Uh, what Senator Walls is proposing is that any dollars that are left on the table uh, as a result of the tax credit granted it a few years ago under LB 1107 would automatically transfer to the Education Future Fund for the purposes of providing for uh, special ed reimbursement. So uh, that's one that, that we will obviously keep our eyes on. Uh, that is one that the Nebraska Association of School Boards has already indicated that they will be supporting. Uh, LB 1052, um, this is uh, maybe not uh, di directly um, with us, but, but it's one that I think uh, you should be aware of, and that is um, Senator Walls' bill to allow a teacher employed at an approved or accredited public, private, non-denominational or parochial school to receive reimbursement for school supplies. So what she would propose to do is create a fund at the Department of Education that any teacher would go to and could seek reimbursement for the purchasing of school supplies. Um, that one um, is set for hearing as well next week. Senator Conrad's LB 855, and this does not apply to this district, uh, but that is um, a bill to prohibit school districts from seek from taking certain actions relating to outstanding debts on a school lunch or breakfast account. Uh, she is prohibiting uh, districts from turning individuals over to collections. Um, there are some districts uh, that have chosen to go that route, and uh, she uh, doesn't find that appropriate, so she's introduced legislation uh, to bar that from happening. Um, LB uh, 1063, uh, and this is one uh, I think the, the committee will look very carefully at tomorrow with the possibility of submitting potential opposition testimony is to require Senator Halloran's uh, require approval by the voters of the school district prior to expenditure of special building funds as prescribed. This would essentially say that no district can spend more than $250,000 uh, out of its special building funds without going to a vote of the people. I mean, do they even understand that, that that's like, so as you recall, there's been a, a bit of a discussion the last few years about property taxes and school districts, some school districts building gyms or additions to their buildings out of their special building funds. Mm -hmm. It's been particularly, uh, and I think we've seen a few of these bills over the last few years where there's frustration from legislators about doing this. I think this is a, another example of that, right? Like he's he's trying to, but I think the part uh, that we should be concerned about is that it doesn't just say you can't do an addition to your building or you can't just do um, build a building. It's literally like you can't even fix the problems you may have in a building without going to a right. vote of the people. Yeah. Like Even the, though the that's, turf on a football field right. that has to be done every twenty years, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, right. You know, or their injuries could occur. Right. That has to go to the vote of the people. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, so that bill, I think, we'll discuss tomorrow in in that session. Let Mary write the letter. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have Can someone edit Mary's letter. <laughs> Senator Halloran. So he is from. Uh, he represents Hastings. Adams County, I think, yeah. maybe cuts down a little bit, picks up another county. And then finally, um, 10, LB 1091, a bill by Senator Dave Merman. Uh, this has a hearing next week as well. Provide requirements and restrictions for school boards relating to professional employees organizations. This is essentially a bill that seems targeted directly at, at NSEA um, to essentially open the door a bit about what are recognized professional organizations uh, and employee organizations uh, and require um, us to provide additional access to that information. So um, so this is uh, one that the School Boards Association is going to monitor. And as well, uh, backing up to 1063, they did take a position of oppose on uh, 1063. So again, just kind of forecasting a little bit for the for the Ledge committee, it's, I'm not used to being here on the night before the ledge committee meets, so it's kind of, you know, like usually it's a couple days before or it's a week and a half before, so it's kind of, kind of adjusting here on the fly. Um, but those are some of those that are coming up next week. Um, again, tomorrow at the end of bill introductions, we'll have the full panoply of bills and what's out there in front of us um, and see what, um, 
you know, kind of where we want to go and where it fits into our legislative priorities. I've talked a lot. I'm going to be quiet, say for one thing. Every year, we do a little gift for legislators as they come back to the Capitol. And so I always want to make sure that the board gets one of those as well. So, and the, and the staff. so that's the stack. I went out to my car because I came back in here and went, oh. <laughs> so I came back, um, came back, came back, went back and got them. So we'll leave those out and you can grab one on your way out the door. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't get here in time to put them on your seats before. So. <laughs> Thank you. That's nice. How are you? There's only one item that's not in there, and that's because it was in high demand, and we apparently didn't order enough of them, and that was the stocking cap. So, oh, uh, but yeah. you will once you get into it, you'll realize the timing of these things getting dropped in people's offices last week was exquisite. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. I don't know if an associate looks like geniuses at the Capitol. <laughs> All right, board, do we have any questions for Joe? I know there's going to be a lot going on in the next few weeks, so. Questions, things you're concerned about, Liz. I see the gears are grinding. What's up? <laughs> I was just wondering the um, the controversial uh, rule changes. If, are you saying that if they don't get passed, then they just don't? Nothing happens with them, right? Correct. So uh, essentially, I think the way to think about it is each of these individual rules are amending the rules, right? So if they don't get to those or they don't get adopted then the rule isn't changed in such a way. So, and I think it's it's been structured in such a way that I don't think it's, I think it'll be very tough to get those last few adopted. Um, I, I'll just posit that, you know, if you're gonna do nine hours, that means you're probably, they're gonna start taking them up probably right after the governor's state of the state on, on Thursday. Um, probably have Thursday afternoon. And then when we get into Friday morning, you know, people are about noon are starting to itch about the chance to get out of town because it's their last uh, weekend before hearings start and hearings are going to go late. And so uh, I think it's sort of set up a little bit to, to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. That would be my theory. Also, the sports and spaces, um, you Bill, where is that? So it sits in education. It has not been advanced by the Education Committee. Um, the, um, the priority designation merely grants it a debate, it assures it of debate if the committee chooses to advance it. So the, the committee would have to vote, uh, would have to get a majority of its membership to, to vote it out. Um, to my knowledge, they have not conducted an executive session yet on it. Um, I think there's, there's folks who are, uh, in the body who have made it pretty clear that they are not interested in a similar debate to last year in terms of, so I, I think the bill will, I, I think that frankly, based on what I've heard, I think the bill will struggle some, um, but that's my opinion based on what we've heard, um, about, you know, whether or not there's the 33 to to invoke cloture or not, but that that can change. I just want to be crystal change clear. Those to you know, unless you change the cloture rule, and then makes it easier. To but get it's there. a priority, right? But it has been Senator Kauf prioritized it, granted it her personal priority. It's her bill, and she granted it her personal priority. I do have a question. Um, Liz, you said that Oh. And make sure to take time for yourself and take care of yourself during this as well. <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. I did yesterday. I was. I did uh, take some time yesterday morning. We. I had. A, I have a new cardiologist, so I got to spend the day like yesterday morning. <laughs> I got to spend yesterday morning like working up with the new cardiologist, and and uh, it was kind of like. Yeah, it's nice to have Brennan and Sarah like that. I don't. You know, like. Oh, I missed that call. They can handle it. So, um, but I appreciate that concern because it's, uh, it's important. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great team. Hire in those good Ralston graduates. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> That's right. All righty. All right. Well, you probably got some reading to do, so we will probably let you go if you are good to let them go. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Don't you. Don't forget your bag. Thank you, Jane, so much. Yeah. I will not. That's still one of my favorite coffee cups, just saying. All right. There's coffee mugs this year, but you might. What the? What? Else. All right. Request <laughs> for next year. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Individual bags. Yeah.
Me? No, we're gonna have to wrestle up. <laughs> yeah, we um, get one. <laughs> all right, we are up to NASB updates and information. I would imagine that's fairly brief since we have stuff going on next week. Yeah, that's that's it. The, the legislative conference that uh, Samantha has uh, talked about already. Then Lincoln um, starts Sunday. It's basically a dinner if anybody's going, and then um, the meeting is on Monday. Uh, is everybody signed up or so I believe we're in the courthouse grill on that one yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know if anyone's interested but they'll be uh, in session in the afternoon as far as uh, an education committee is one of the ones having the hearings so if you've never gone to one if you want to just go and see what one looks like uh, Aaron and I are both planning on being down there too and it's supposed to be in the 30s, so it'll feel like so, <laughs> so, warm. So, so me. <laughs> if, if anybody that's down there is interested, if you want to um, free up some time your schedule, we can go over and just take a look at what the hearings look like if, if that's what you want to do. Ooh. That's on Monday afternoon, yeah. Yeah, I, I believe uh, education starts at 1 30, and then we have a board meeting that night, yeah. Uh, there's a budget and finance workshop in Lincoln uh, on March 5th, if anybody's interested in that. Uh, and then afterwards is the Amplified Finance Module. Uh, oh, no. The Finance Module is in the afternoon and the Budget and Finance Workshops of the evening, both on the same day, March 5th, in Lincoln. So if you're interested in doing that. Are you going, Aaron? Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know if anybody on the finance committee is interested in doing that. Maybe that one. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right, that was a pretty easy one. Uh, and I think that takes us to enrollment update. Miss Ann Harley, what's going on with you? Hey. Um, same, same kind of pattern. Not a lot has changed um, from where we were a year ago. We have uh, K through 12, we're up 39 kids compared to where we were a year ago. Nice. That's it. All right. So just something to bring up so the board's aware. We've got, um, it's not an issue right now, but it'll be an issue going into next year uh, at Karen Western. If you look at their enrollment, and I've got it up here, you can see that um, they've gone from being a one-section school to being two sections in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. Mm -hmm. Well, every every classroom is full down there. Okay, so we've got a third grade that's going to graduate up into fourth grade, and that's too many kids to have one sec in one section. Mm -hmm. So we're we're contemplating what our our um, our path forward is going to be for this. We can't create additional space down there, uh, and we don't really don't want to have a class size of you know thirty four. I mean, that's way too big. Um, so we're trying to figure out what our best pathway is going forward. Uh, to try and, and get the enrollment issue we have, which is a good thing. We've got more kids than we've got space for, um, to figure out how we can get that amended. A um, couple of things that we're kicking around at this point, uh, we're looking at um, potentially offering transportation out to our option enrollment students and allowing them to go to different schools if that's what they, what they wanted to do. Um, of course, we'll be uh, aware if we have kids that have siblings in the school, those would be ones we, we, we would transfer, transport both if that was a case. Um, but we really want to try and, even in worst case scenario, get that number down to somewhere around 25, 24, uh, somewhere in that range. We'll have some natural attrition that'll happen. Um, you know, we'll have kids that'll move in and out, but I don't anticipate it'd be more than a couple kids. Um, so that being the case, we're going we're to have to take some steps in trying to get that section number back down. And not only is it an issue this year, but it's going to be an issue for several years to come because if you look at the enrollment they have in there, 28 is pretty big, um, but potentially we could manage that. We could not 38, and we could not with 30 uh, in those in those upcoming sections. So that's something that um, we're working on at this point. We'll see what our, our best direction is going forward. Obviously, we're not accepting option enrollment students, which is why I bring it up now uh, for those or for that grade level, just because we don't have room for them. Has it always been a one-section building? Uh, it, it's gone back and forth. We've had some years where we've split some things up uh, to where we've had two sections as we've had anomalies for classes. But as you can see here, our, our uh, enrollment has been pretty consistent. Um, so that means that there's an influx of kids that live in that neighborhood that, that are attending the schools. So. And at the time when the option enrollments uh, were accepted, 
uh, the numbers were no, nowhere near that large. So um, we're not going to turn anybody away. We're, we're just going to fig figure out how best we can serve them and what buildings those will be in. It's a fun little puzzle. <laughs> Is this something that's been experienced in class and other elementary? So we've got, um, that's a great question. So if we look at the, the one that, well, there's two of them here. We look at Mockingbird as an example. Uh, Mockingbird is is almost an entirely three section building. Okay, they've got one in fourth grade that is not. They're two section, forty seven kids, which is is pretty full. Not quite, you know, not quite twenty five kids, but getting up in that upper range of where we feel comfortable with our class size. If you look at their third grade section, third grade which has three has fifty five kids in there. Well, that's too big for the two section deal. Um, so that's one of the positions that we're, that we're looking at adding uh, for next year is to add that additional fourth grade. So that building as a whole is eventually going to turn into a true three-section building all the way across. The other one that we have uh, that's an issue is Seymour. Um, so at Seymour, remember, we talked about those combo classrooms that we had in grades five and, and six. Uh, and as, as you can see from the numbers there, combine the two, there's 79 kids um, that they have between the two different grade levels. Well, we think that ideally... Uh, and particularly with the numbers that are pretty large coming up here in third grade, uh, that we want that building to be a true two-section building. So that's one of the reasons why we're looking at making those moves as we go through the renovation. And unfortunately, preschool is one of the programs that we have some flexibility to move out. Preschool will go to Bloomfield for a year, then all the students will return back to Seymour, and then Seymour ends up being a true two-section building, kindergarten all the way through. So, um, so yes, there, we have some issues across the board and what we're trying to do as we do these renovations is come up with a building like Seymour for example is now true to set or will be true to section as we go through it. Karen Western's a tough one because there's limited space down there and, and it's hard to make that a true two section building. I don't want to get real deep in the weeds but in addition to keeping the class sizes at a manageable level there's just a, a tremendous amount of gain that the teacher has in having someone else that teaches that same grade level. Mm -hmm. So the collaboration right. piece is pretty Huge. essential that yeah. uh, if you're, well, right now, if you're the fifth and sixth grade combo teacher, you're the only one in the district mm -hmm. um, that we have that does that. So it's really hard for them um, to be able to collaborate with the lessons and things they have. Um, this, uh, we think, is going to be better not only for our staff, but, and more importantly, for kids. Yeah, great question, though. Do the numbers of kids um, enrolled in preschool usually give us a good indication of how many to expect for kindergarten, or is that significantly lower? Um, it, from This will be my first time to right. experience it, but my understanding is it is not a, a perfect compass, okay. no. Okay. And um, you may recall that we had talked about um, how late people are enrolling their kindergartners, and so we're really, I think, making a really significant effort to get that word out now so that our secretaries are kind of rattling the bushes around their neighborhoods and making sure that anybody that has school-age children that are just now enrolling, that they were getting the word out. And, it, and it's artificially driven low, too, in that we don't accept any out-of-district yep. um, students in for preschool. We serve our in-district only, and we still end up with a waiting list of a couple kids. Mm -hmm. So that number is going to artificially look lower than what it is. Probably the more true indicator for us is the census data um, that we look at to give us, you know, at least an idea of, okay, you're going to have a, I don't, know, I don't know if it's a thing, but COVID babies are going to become an issue yeah. where we're going to have a bunch of them all at once. Or if the reverse of that, COVID. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, yeah. I think the rate went down, actually. Right. So if that was the case, but it's really kind of hit or miss. <laughs> no. it's, I don't know if. We'll take a little bit of a bird walk here, but that's why uh, we're getting ready to start promoting our kindergarten roundup. Yep. Um, so you'll see those banners and things out at the mm -hmm. schools, and we'll try and, and get people, as many as we can, to come in and at least give us an idea of what 70% of the population will look like. And we, we anticipate we're going to have another 15 to 20% of those show up that we yep. won't know about yeah. until they're here. Spread the word. Enroll now. Well, the enrollment is open right now for kindergarten. I say, I've okay. seen that a lot on social media here yep. lately. Yep. That's great. It feels like it's it's um, earlier than the past, I guess I will mm -hmm. say. Which I'm not saying is a bad thing. It seems like the women. advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't know what it was in the past. Um, yeah. And pre-K opens February 5th. 
And so, yeah, if you know of any families, if you can say, get that in. It's tricky because if we see like there's, there's room at Wildwood, let's say, for kindergarten, and we have option enrollment, people say, I have got a kindergartner. I look at Wildwood and I say, oh, it looks like there's room. And then all of a sudden at the last minute, there's a whole bunch of neighborhood kids that move in. And I just, I want, as we all want that, our neighborhood kids going to our neighborhood schools. And it's certainly not an exact science. That's how we, how we end up with some of the imbalances we have. In yeah, the perfect yes. world, everybody would live equally in those. Yeah. You know, well, and I wonder how we reach out to like the child care programs maybe that are in the area. And because that's where they are. I mean, they're either home or they're in a child care program. So in the past, so, we've done that. Yeah. We've also done uh, apartment complexes. Yeah. Um, we'll send that out to the property managers and say, you know, if you've got anybody you think would be, you know, in this age range, would you please? Because the social media is great, but how many people join the the so the elementary school's Facebook page until their kids actually start in right. elementary school? So we're speaking a different language. Yeah. 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 Yes. So yeah. That's that's a good yeah. point for us. And then the yeah. library too. I know if that's maybe pick up the library. I was kind of wondering if you ever got a hold of Amanda at the library, or do you need me to make that connection again? <laughs> Don't no, I got it. Toddler story time or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That might be good one. I will I'll reach out to her. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yes. she's super sweet. I'm sure she'll be happy yep. to help. Absolutely. And it might not hurt to offer, like, if you don't have a computer and you need to register your kindergartner, mm -hmm. the library has yes, a library. That's what we talked about. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. So, all right. There we go. All the enrollment things are solved. Everything is perfect. Oh, now. solved. That's we're still working. Awesome. No. Oh, okay. It's, okay. It's <laughs> an existential question. We That's it. About every We've cured the ills of the world. Okay. Anything else, guys? Enrollment update? I'm just looking at the main page again. And if I, again, coming from the district, not knowing anything about the district at all, it does say we encourage you to do this as soon as possible. But there still is no, I don't know if this is in the, on there, but if you have issues with late families, they don't they don't know that they might lose their spot in their neighborhood school if they, like our local kids, right? If you don't show up until June and your local school is full of option kids, you don't know that you're getting sent somewhere else. And I don't know, I don't think you need to say that on there, but saying like, like I would almost say like we recommend doing it by this day. I think I would, is there I would, a deadline you that you that. have before you open up, open it to option enrollment option kids? Enroll. Like, before this date, we hold. Yeah. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Um, my understanding is in the past when an option enrollment um, application would come in, they would place those kids right away. I'm changing that up a little bit. Um, option enrollment closes on March 15th, mm -hmm. so I'm holding those until March 15th, cool. so we can get as many of our neighborhood kids in as we can. Yeah. And so that's the message that we're sending, is we will start placing option enrollment kids after March 15th. Yeah. So even like on this, so when I click on enrollment, I think it'd be super helpful, because it's how my brain works, and I know I'm not the only, my brain's really weird, but I know I'm not the only one, to say like, we like as soon as possible, we recommend by, if, if you can wordsmith that mm -hmm. in, like give people a deadline mm -hmm. because as soon as possible for yeah. for for uh, my money folks, it's probably way different than as soon as possible for my not money folk, like just different yeah. ways of people's brains. I, I think that's... As soon as possible is like, oh, by June, right? Because school starts in August. So that's really, that's too no, much No, you're early. exactly right. And that's that's exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Give them a, give them a day. Well, if you can, like if we, give them a day. If they could be done before March yeah. 15th, that would make that be so nice. my life a lot easier. Yeah. I'll um, talk to Jim. Yeah, give him a day. Yep. Cool. Yep. Thanks, everybody. All right, go team. Go. District bond project update. Okay. I believe we turn um, this back to Jason. Yeah, just to, to keep this brief, to give the board an update of where we're at. Mockingbird's moving along. Um, still a lot of work to do there, but they've gotten to the point where everything's closed in. Uh, and they've got temporary heat in the building, which is a huge thing. Uh, if you want to see construction workers happy, turn on the heater uh, when it's 15 below outside. So they've got that going. It's not anywhere near up to, you know, 70 degrees in there, but they do have it in the, in the 50s, uh, which is pretty That's comfortable good. working uh, temperature, to be honest with you. So we got temporary heat. They're working on the uh, ductwork plumbing. That stuff's progressing on schedule. Uh, we still um, are anticipating being able to move our stuff over at the end of the school year out of the old building and the new one. We're working out the logistics of how that's going to happen, uh, what date we're going to do that. Just as a kind of a well, precursor to that, we may end up stopping school a day earlier. So there, well, maybe two days early, 
uh, just so that we can get the materials moved out so they can get uh, everybody out of there so they can start with the asbestos removal. The reason why I don't have a firm idea of how many days we're going to have off is because I don't know how many more snow days we're going to have. One of the things that you'll see on the board agenda that we'll have for Monday when we meet, um, I've got our instructional timesheet put together so we can go through and I, I can show you where the four days are, what they've done to the amount of time we have over the state minimum and uh, decisions we have to may have to make. Um, just one thing to keep in mind too, we did have two schools that have missed three additional days uh, because of the move. Um, so those are things that, that we're monitoring very closely and we've got some ideas of how we can recoup some of this time we've lost but it's a little bit of a fool's errand right now until we know how many snow days we're going to have to have and how much we have to make up. So. Can you remind me too, do we have four built uh, four built into the calendar? Or no, we, We've got more, way more than that. How yeah. many we built it? Okay. Um, oh, good. Well, it, so to answer your question it, is it depends. Okay. It depends on what the length of your day is at your school. Yeah. Also depends on if you're uh, elementary age, the state requirements are 1,030. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're uh, secondary, it's 1,080. Yeah. So depending on, excuse me, 1,032 and 1,080. So depending on where you're at, mm -hmm. determines how many extra days are built into the schedule. Okay. So I'll have that sheet for you next time. Thank Hopefully you. I won't have to add any more days into it, <laughs> um, but I'll have that for you and, and we can talk about what some of our options are. We can recover some of this time. Uh, we can take early out so we have on Fridays and instead of the only two hours, go to one hour. Well, by the time you do that, it doesn't take very long. You can you can recover a day in, in seven weeks. So there, there are some things we have. We can extend the school year if we need to. I mean, there's, there's things that we can do. Um, but again, those are all just possibilities. Um, if we don't have any more snow days, we're okay at this point, I guess is, is what I'm trying to tell you. But I think we know it's only January 15th or 16th, excuse me. And uh, we've had one storm that knocked us out for three days or two days. Okay, uh, moving on then. Um, Jim's painted uh, the ceiling and walls. They've got that part done. Um, they're starting on some tile work. So you know that the, the temperatures is such that they can, they can do that type of work right now. Uh, Bloomfield, they're really working pretty well in there. Most of the major demos complete. Um, they have started framing it. A couple sections have already started to hang drywall back up again. Um, so it's, it's starting to shell out into, at least in some of those phase areas, where it looks like what the finished product will look like as far as the actual uh, footprint of the building itself. Um, they've got some things they need to do for uh, pouring some concrete, but it's way too cold for that. Uh, they're not confident that they can get the concrete from the plant to the site without having to freeze on it. Um, so that's a little bit of a hold up, but it's, it's nothing that's gonna stop the rest of the building from moving on. Meadows, just punch list stuff. They did have on that uh, nice custom made desk, um, for whatever reason, change in climate, the formica across the very front middle of it cracked. Oh. Uh, so they've gone back and they've, uh, on, on the face of it, not, yeah. on the, not on the shelf itself. So they've gone back and stripped that out and they're going to repair that at no cost to us. Cool. Wildwood just about done too. They've got some exterior lights that need to be completed. And once they get that done, then they can program them so that lights aren't burning all day long. And that they'll be uh, night activated and motion activated too. Seymour, this is the one we're really starting to ramp up and gear up for. Um, Subcontracts are filled. Um, tonight, if you've looked at the agenda, we have the GMP on there. Um, so we've, we've got that <clears throat> reminder again, that scope of work has changed a little bit and we'll talk about that more. Um, but we have, the 40, um, we have the intent of trying to replace all that opaque or cowl glass uh, all the way through. That has driven the cost up a little bit. It's still, uh, close to budget, but it's going to be a little bit over what we had budgeted originally. But we are increasing the scope of work quite a bit for that building. And then Karen Western, uh, we had a pre-bid on flooring, which one person showed up for, but I know we will have at least four bids on that one. We've got contractors that just didn't want to break the weather. On that. And then finally, RMS, we had a walkthrough on that one. Um, we probably had 15 subcontractors show up for that. Uh, just looking at the scope of the project. That one will be unique because it'll be stretched out over two years. Uh, we'll get some of it done this summer. Most of that will be parking lot and vestibule work. So they'll have a secure vestibule at the front of the building. Then the second summer uh, will be where they'll come in. They'll, they'll start doing the major work that we've seen in other buildings, which is the flooring and the technology and the network and you know all those different pieces. So all in all, uh, we're progressing uh, pretty well. And um, you know it's been... Kind of nice to catch your breath here to enjoy Wildwood for a little bit, but now we're starting to ramp back up again and get ready for 
uh, see more and to make sure that we're, we get our Bloomfield project done and should be on pace for both those two. Uh, one thing, a reminder of Seymour, that um, because of the increased scope of work, we don't think that we don't feel confident that we'll have that building done in time. Uh, so we are looking at spending maybe a month uh, to two months over at West Side for that building. Start the year there, then they'll transition back, and then they'll uh, then they'll have a building that that'll be done instead of you know pieces and parts of it that still need to be completed. So I don't want to move again, but I don't want to not have a building ready to start either. So, okay, any questions on the construction piece of it? Did you just say something about Westside? Seymour is going to uh, probably be August, maybe September. Okay, because I, I read somewhere about it extending the contract. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So um, that's something that we have not done that formally with them yet, but uh, unless there are any objections, I think I'll go ahead and do that with the uh, West side, that'll be a board action on their part too. They don't need the facility until 25, so it's, it's going to sit vacant. Then. So, so we do have some time over there. So it worked out, worked out well. Okay, so great transition then. Uh, if we want to move into more 9.1 construction manager at risk, board, I would take a motion before we discuss. Motion for Peralston Public Schools to enter into construction management agreement with the Lights Company for Seymour, Seymour Elementary, Ralston Middle, and Ralston High School facilities improvement project as proposed. Second. There was Mary with the motion and Mary with the second. Discussion. So just a reminder of what this is. Um, back when we had the vetting process for these last three projects uh, for our second CMR draw, um, the rating system, the, the um, recommendation of the committee that we had was to uh, approve whites for that spot. The board agreed with that pending contract. We had the contract in place. The timing of this and why it's a little bit later than what it has been in the past is quite honestly, I want to see how Seymour's GMP came out. Reminder, this does not bind us that we have to do all three projects with them. This only says that we're entering into a CMR agreement. If we can't come up to an agreement on what the prices are, um, then we're free to, to uh, back out of that contract and we can open it back up again. So, so I did want to wait and see uh, when we came out with Seymour and with the additional work. I, that's our next action item that we have on there. Um, with the addition of, of the work we have on there, we feel like we're getting a fair price. And our architects in agreement with us. So, so um, with that, what this does then is it essentially starts the CMR2 relationship for the, these three projects. And each one of those GMPs that come up or guaranteed maximum prices that come up, those all come before the board for approval. So we're not spending any money with this. This doesn't, doesn't uh, obligate us to anything other than we're into, into an agreement with it. <coughs> all right, well, we've been down through this rodeo before. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, does anybody have any questions? Please call the vote. Mrs. Kumru. Aye. Ms. Rorty. Aye. Mrs. Huff. Aye. Mrs. Willie. Aye. Mrs. Richards. Aye. Mrs. Krauss. Aye. Excellent. Motion passes. Thank you, board. And now I would take a motion for 9.2. Motion to approve the GMP for whites for the remodel of Seymour Elementary in the amount of three million six hundred and five. Oh gosh. <laughs> three million six hundred and five thousand and fourteen dollars. Nailed it. Very accurate. <laughs> Second. Second. Oh, let's beat you, but we'll let okay. you get the next one. Bill. <laughs> All right. Katie was the motion, and Liz was the second on that right. discussion. So this is the, the GMP component of it then for Seymour Elementary. And, um, you know, we can go through the scope of projects if you want. Again, it's about $3.6 million. Where we had this uh, project budgeted out entirely uh, was right around three point five eight or so. So we're over, but just to caution the board and, and why I bring this up, this does not include architectural fees. This doesn't include the technology piece. So those are the two that will end up being put in here. Right now, that number is going to be somewhere around oh, 350 to 400,000. So that's about what our overage will be on this. But again, the reason why it's over is that we've expanded the scope on this. Um, the time to replace that glass is now. And that's just a little bit more than what we had budgeted originally. Um, as we come out, and, and I probably need to do this, and I, I would lean on our two subcommittee uh, people in building the grounds. 
Um, I've got a spreadsheet that I share out with them. Uh, generally, it's been every meeting the last couple um, that is a, a live tracker of where we are, what we spent, and where we are with our, our budget. Um, I could certainly put that on the next agenda. Sure. Or, okay, I'll put that on for Monday, and then I'll give you an idea of where we sit and uh, how we're doing so far. We had a couple buildings that have come in under budget uh, so far. We've had, obviously, Mockingbird's going to be way over, um, and this building will be a little bit over, too, but the other ones have come in pretty well. Bloomfield, I think we're going to be in pretty decent shape on by the time that one's said and done. So um, if we can get to the point where we enter into the middle in the high school and we're not even, but we're only maybe a million or a million and a half down, that would be a pretty good spot. We'll be able to date on a lot of projects that, that we anticipate are doing this. Great. All right. Other questions, comments, concerns? Is that really going to affect the library, like the preschool classroom, library classroom at Seymour? Because I is that that's a significant amount of that that glass. Yeah. So the the glass great there. question. So um, where, where that cowl glass sits, um, number one, it's it's aged and yellow. R negative ten. Number two, in weather like this, it's cold. I mean, it, it's cold in those buildings. That before we started this whole renovation piece, that building had the newest HVAC system in the district. We had done all that in 2017, I think it was replaced. And uh, we're, we're lucky we did because that, that has such a low insulation uh, factor in there. So when those, those go out, we're still gonna come back and they'll have sections that'll have glass in them, mm -hmm. um, but the other sections will be framed in just like they're a regular wall and they'll be insulated and the feel of the building should be much, much improved uh, based on the construction that we have anticipated. Now, it doesn't come without a cost, and that's one of the reasons why we're, we're gonna go over what we initially, initially anticipated. But the way that'll tie in, and the way it'll tie in with the, uh, the refiguring the walls that we have in, in each of the different classrooms, and quite honestly, this is the time to do it. So we'll, um, we'll figure it out. We'll, um, we're not gonna cut corners on things, but uh, we'll make sure that we're aware that the high school still needs a lot of work too, and, and we need to have money left for that project because it's going to be pretty extensive. It looks so different. All right. I believe that is it. Please call the vote. Mrs. Kumru. Aye. Mrs. Huff. Aye. Mrs. Willie. Aye. Mrs. Richards. Aye. Mrs. Krause. Aye. Ms. Marty. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Thank you. All right, so that takes us into district service providers. I would take a motion, please. Motion to approve the district service provider list as presented. Second. All right, Carrie got second time, and Mary was our motion. Thank you. Uh, any uh, discussion? This is just one of those things we do at the start of, of each year. Um, probably, really, the only 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 two things we absolutely have to do on here is the. Um, the legal publisher and the designated treasurer. Um, and those don't ha necessarily have to be done, but it's probably prudent that we do it, you know, in the first meeting of the year. The rest of the stuff we just list on there so that uh, the board's familiar with who our vendors are in those areas. Um, we spread our banking around to at least two different uh, local banks. Um, well, used to be local uh, banks. And then um, where our money sits, in the special building fund, that money isn't just parked idle, uh, where it's not making any interest. Uh, we use the liquid asset fund uh, for that, and we do. It's not a great rate of return, but it's better than having it sit in the bank. Um, so we, we are able to cover some costs and have some more money coming to our special building fund based on the you know 50 some odd million that we have sitting in the liquid asset fund right now. <coughs> and then uh, just some other things to note on there, auditing firm, bond attorney, general counsel, uh, just so the board knows uh, who, we're, who we're dealing with. So this does not in any way obligate us to work only with these different entities, but it is something that we, we just put out so that the board's aware of, of where our money is and who we're using for legal services. Questions, comments, concerns? All right, please call the vote. Mrs. Huff? Aye. Mrs. Willie? Aye. Mrs. Richards? Aye. Mrs. Kraus? Aye. Ms. Rorty? Aye. Mrs. Kumru? All right. Thank you. Motion passes. All right. Another one of these fun ones. Title IX coordinator appointment. I would take a motion, please. Motion to approve Mike Ruprecht. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, to serve as the Ralston Public Schools non discrimination compliance coordinator and Title IX coordinator. Second. 
All right, motion by Liz, seconded by Katie. Thank you. Any discussion on this fine moment? Just that this has been something that, that I think it's been a little bit of an oversight on our part. We're supposed to do this on a yearly basis. And I can't remember. Oh. Mike and I talked. I don't remember the last time we did this. It's been a while. Uh, this is just something that uh, is uh, usually due that most HRD, uh, most HR people in the uh, public school districts uh, just do. Uh, if you're talking about um, you know, making sure uh, that your um, uh, buildings and your districts are promoting policies that are going to promote uh, equity with genders, uh, making sure everybody is treated equally, it's just a natural outgrowth of, of what we normally do with our district hiring process is to extend that uh, to staff or, or students as well. Good. Excellent. Please call the vote. All right. Ms. Rorty. Aye. Mrs. Huff? Aye. Mrs. Coomer? Aye. Mrs. Richards? Aye. Mrs. Willie? And Mrs. Krause? Aye. Thanks for catching that, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We've got some calendar changes, and I would take a motion. Motion to approve the amended school calendars for the 2024, 2025, and 2025, 2026 school years. Excellent. That was Katie on the motion and Samantha on the second uh, discussion. Seems like deja vu. It is a little <laughs> bit. Um, we had we just had one error. We had a, and it wasn't a student day. We had a staff day that was uh, listed as and um, I think it was collaboration day. Or, yeah, it's. Yeah, I apologize. We're presenting this to the board for the second time. But basically, what happened is that we had uh, Easter Monday, which was identified as a uh, professional learning day. So on my calendar that I had, I colored that in yellow, uh, but when we went through, it should have been colored in red, which was a uh, no uh, day for staff or students. So either way, we would have had this. The students would not have been in session. The real only difference is that this will be a day when our uh, staff members will not be in session as well. So I apologize that I used the wrong color. Thanks for your Mistakes happen. That's all right. Easter Monday on both days. On both. Luckily, it's an easy fix, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything else on the calendar remains exactly the same. Great. All righty. Well, Marcy, please call the vote. Here we go. Mrs. Kraus. Aye. Mrs. Richards. Aye. Ms. Rorty. Aye. Mrs. Willie. Aye. Mrs. Coomer. Aye. Mrs. Huff. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Thank you, board. All right, now into policy review, which is where we really get wild. Jason, take us away. Okay, so we've got uh, quite a few on here, and, and, uh, and it's been a while for review. The first one we have for review is 5045. Um, if this looks familiar, this is one that we look at each year when we do our student fee hearing. Uh, and, and basically, it, it lists out and we're in compliance with the different parts that we have. Um, this policy, again, is one we get from a policy service us out what our do's and don'ts are with it, what we can charge for and what we can't charge for. It specifically addresses the fee waiver, uh, which of course we, we um, have for our students. And sections in uh, section A and uh, section C are both, excuse me, I, yeah, section A and section C are both areas that uh, students with uh, a granted uh, fee waiver are able to go in and uh, they're able to have those, those fees waived. Um, so I, I would not recommend any change to this. This has been pretty consistent with what we've done. We comply each year with our student fee hearing, and um, you know the, the public has the opportunity to come in and comment on our fees. We just haven't had that in recent memory. And those fees are listed uh, in each uh, different handbook. So we've got a separate one for elementary, one for middle, and one for high. Our service hasn't made any changes to it either. Right, so because it's been 2018, yep. so it's, yep. it's a long time. Yeah, interesting. Since it was reviewed, yeah. So, our next one, then, uh, oh, any comments on that one? So, our next one that we have then is uh, 5057 District Title I Parent and Family uh, Engagement Policy. Uh, Anne, do you want to speak a little bit about this one? This one is, um, it just, it goes along with what, how we spend our title funds and uh, part of our ESSA grant and all of our elementary schools are Title I buildings. And so each building meets with, um, invites all parents to their buildings um, and they receive um, information on 
uh, how we are title building and they receive what's called a school compact. And so it's, um, it's generated by the district and it lets, um, it's just kind of a legal, legal binding air quotes saying we're in this together. We have a partnership in this together with you and with your, with your um, children. And uh, we do have um, our, our elementaries typically host two Title I nights a year, and they can choose how they want to use those nights. One is like an information night. As you read through this policy, you can see that it could be an opportunity for students to engage in curriculum with their parents. Um, there might be like a books and bingo type of a night. And each school, through our ESSA grant, um, they get reimbursed for any money that they spend on, say, for example, like books and bingo, if they're buying books for their, for their families. And so we have all of those are set. All those um, dates have been set and submitted to me. Um, if you would like to attend any of those, um, I will get those dates to you. I will say I don't, I, I, in my own experience of working in Title I buildings, I don't know what it looks like here. Um, but typically we didn't have a super great turnout, um, but we are in compliance and um, Bloomfield has not set a spring one yet because they weren't exactly sure what their situation was going to yeah. be, but I will get those events sent to you. Mm -hmm. Bingo list? Right. I Bingo night, ladies. Bingo. <laughs> you know how to call those numbers. Y'all, I just paid. Um, don't, don't make it dinosaur bingo because I played dinosaur bingo today at Lawrence and Gardens. And, oh, <laughs> I can't say any of the dinosaur names. I, I learned whole word, not Manet phonics. I didn't do hooked on phonics work for me. I could not pronounce any of them. It was awful. Brontosaurus 3. I could do like Brontosaurus, Triceratops. <laughs> All right. We still have we have two more books and bingo coming up. It's not too late, Liz. <laughs> we're locked down. I think we're committed to a five-year deal to see uh, Meadows. So we're we'll letting someone's last team. Yeah, all right then. I'm gonna have to we're, see this team in action. We're a good team. The good part is is that we've got a new sound system that we need to gonna slow down. Oh, nice. Right. <laughs> I mean, are all families invited to that? All families. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Great. Okay, uh, next policy we have 6007, senior recognition. Uh, there is a change to this language, and I, I didn't submit it in here um, because I think this is part of a broader discussion that we can have. Uh, the section under valedictorian, um, and this policy hasn't been reviewed for five years either, uh, it uses scholastic class rank system and academic class rank system. Um, those have been replaced with uh, district class rank system and mark point average rank system. So those are the things we've had listed specifically in our handbook over the course of the last few years. So my recommendation, and I I'll, can't bring this back to the board with approval, uh, is to change those two terms around so that it's consistent with what we're publishing in our handbook. Yeah. So why I bring this up, and, and uh, I think this led us to a little bit more um, of a broader uh, conversation with our high school administration, uh, they would like to revisit the idea of a valedictorian entirely. Um, so there have been, uh, has been quite a movement away from uh, the valedictorian as a whole, as a, as a position in not only metro schools, but some of our smaller schools uh, surrounding the metro area. And I think uh, Ryan and Stacy would both like to come in and, and present and, and kind of tell you the information that they have and, and why this may be something that we would want to explore as a district. What I will tell you, if we do make that change, it's a four-year change. It's got to be in the handbook, and it's got to be in the handbook for the entire four years of any time you make a change in class rank or you make a change in valedictorian. Mm -hmm. You can't change horses in midstream. You've got to stick with what you've got for uh, the duration of the kids being uh, in that under that original uh, valedictorian thing. So with the board's um, blessing, if, if you want, uh, the high school staff would be willing to come in and present on what their views are and, and what they think about it. And, and I think that would be a great discussion. Yeah. We may look at them. We can do a couple different things. Do you know when they're up to present on their school improvement? I'll check. Yeah, that'd be great. But I don't think there's any real hurry with this. I mean, we're not doing handbooks until you know we get around to May, June. So. Um, so we would want to correct the wording, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I'll, I'll bring that back at the next meeting uh, for approval on that policy, just so we can get it um, consistent and get it right. Um, but as far as the presentation for the high school. They are set for April 22nd, but we do have an op an opening on February 12th. Okay. 
So we'll, we'll work with them on that, and we'll, we'll get them on the agenda coming up here next month or so. Okay, uh, rest of the stuff, it looks like it's all uh, all in uh, in alignment with where we have published in our, in our handbooks. All right, 6027 uh, field trips. And this talks about what the general conditions are. Uh, we ask that, that they have, uh, well, we require that they have parental permission slips uh, if they're going on, uh, going on field trips. Um, it also makes mention in there what some of the requirements are for our chaperones and uh, what our expectations are. Um, anyone that we have that's a chaperone, that, um, that isn't a, a right necessarily, it's a privilege. So if we have someone that is, is not acting the way they should as a chaperone, they can be removed from that position. Uh, at this point, I, I don't have any recommendations for changes to this policy. Jason, the one thing I wanted to ask about was um, was the transportation piece of it. Okay. So do we do we ever have situations where there's you know one adult and one student so being transported? We have, and and I'll tell you the one example that I can think of. Um, we had a situation where uh, we had to have a student come home from outdoor ed. Mm -hmm. And they had the uh, administrator out there had to bring uh, that student back. Actually, I think it happened a couple times. One was a disciplinary. Another was a, they just they just didn't want to spend the night away from their folks sure. and, and thought it was a good idea. And then they just couldn't do it. So they had to bring it back. Sure. Um, so we have had that, but very rarely. And, and we, that's something that we very much like to avoid just because of the, right. the, the potential for, you know, a, a, well, without going into the details of the potential of, of some misbehavior happening uh, on the part of our staff, or even just There's an accusation. Right? Yeah. 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 So um, we very much try and avoid uh, doing that um, and having a one-to-one -one staff to student or chaperone to student, um, if at all possible. Thank you. Okay, next. Uh, we had school calendar, thought this was uh, timely, and we haven't done this for a while, too, um, since we approved the calendar tonight. This just talks about uh, what the process is, and the board will approve or amend any calendars, which we both did tonight. So uh, we're right along with what the requirements are. Um, no suggestion for changes on that one. And then the last one I also thought was kind of timely, um, since this is our first meeting of the year. Nobody's done anything wrong. I'm not this <laughs> at, at anybody in particular. Um, but as we look at it, uh, we have had times where um, there have been some concerns about nobody on this board, uh, but board behavior uh, with previous board members and how do, how do we hold each other accountable and what level or what standard um, should, should a board member reflect. So this is the policy that we have. And as each of you went through your orientation here, um, it was either Dr. Adler or myself went over uh, this policy, but we didn't really spend a whole lot of time on it specifically. Um, but this gives you at least an idea of what the board member code of ethics uh, includes and what we've got in policy here. I don't see a whole lot that's changed, but I, I thought it would be uh, thought it would be appropriate at, at this time as we start a new year, uh, just to throw that out there and as a reminder that we do have that policy in place that, that regulates uh, regulates board behavior. Did we? Um change the his or her certainly can if you want to go back to gender neutral on on this policy you bet yeah. and liz that's something i've, I've kind of fallen asleep on that one um we did that with a lot of our policies early on and i, I haven't really done that with ashley yet um so I'll, I'll make sure that that's something that we get on there so we need policy 2012 uh gender neutral Okay. Uh, other concerns that we have with the policy. Okay, six zero zero seven changes. Okay, we'll get those made. All right. All right. Policy review is done now. Um, we do have executive session, but let's discuss all the other things first. pre adjournment information and activities. What do we got going on there? Announcements. Somebody got announcements. Aaron does. Aaron, what you got going on? We, <clears throat> just like noted earlier, it's the name a snowplow opportunity yeah. for our kiddos, mm -hmm. and we were up to about 150 names already. Oh, to oh my, oh my gosh! <laughs> really? Uh, 
school's not been in session, so hopefully we'll be been naming some flowers. Uh, but that's just been through Jim's communication out to the community. And so we'll submit those names too. I think we have Thursday listed as a name. And then it's up to the board to select the party. Who gets to pick? You do, the board. Oh, oh. oh. the board. Hey. Yeah, we. I read that and I was yeah. like, okay, and that's not my kid to submit one. I can't, buy, can't have a bias. And you have to abstain. I know, I, I know. I was like, I'm not telling him to submit So we did decide we'll name all of them. So we have five trucks to select and then whenever they're picked, um, we're going to get magnets to go on the trucks that they'll wear as they plow the streets and <laughs> so it's a permanent destination we decided we're going to go ahead and try and do it annual yeah nice. awesome so, so as you can see on the notification here our kids have a track record of winning the nebraska department of transportation so yeah. we thought let's celebrate that talent internally as well so. <laughs> so will we get to review the names before monday yep Yep, we'll send them to you. I think probably uh, end of business day Thursday we'll get them out. Very well. We're, we're giving the teachers time uh, now they have these kids back in the classroom to see if they want to do it as a classroom activity. Oh, man. That's awesome. It's like what Bucay and La Vista did to sort all those board members they had to go to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Goodness, that's a lot to, to narrow down, y'all. Jim's been having fun with it. He's been coming to my office about every day with one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and generally, he's giggling when he does it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a good Jim giggle. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Great. I love that it'll be every year, too. I think that's really fun. Maybe we got to do it like in November, too, so that it's. Right. Yeah. But it's kind of maggots this get year ready to high be spring, but yeah, it's okay. It's kind of sparked by the idea of our truck showing up early, but in the future, yeah. now we do hope to get it out before. Yeah. Sure. So, we may have to talk about that, whoever the winner is. Maybe we give them the magnets and we'll go. Oh, oh yeah. So cute. That's, That's a good idea. idea. Yeah. Buck, you've had two good ideas. Oh, man, Mikey, how did this come here now? Such and such plow, named five, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh, man. I would keep that forever. Okay, I'm super I'm like, okay. now nah, we're going to be talking about this. Uh, okay, simmer down. <laughs> <laughs> With a magnet on our refrigerator. <laughs> frame. My early favorite is plowing yeah, the coffees. Plowy McPlow yeah. face. Those All right. Watch Friends. Yes. What's it called? Yeah. Do it. What? The ones that he's the forerunner is uh, Plowy McPlow face. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my daughter's. <laughs> All right. Well, plow naming aside, future board calendar. We've got uh, another meeting coming up. We will be six days. Yeah, reconvening here in six days. Uh, Liz already talked to us through the Legislative Issues Conference. Don't forget the NSBA is in New Orleans this year. Please talk to Marcy if you can attend. It is a good time. Robin, yes. can I just, if while you're talking about that, I did text Ryan and Stacy to see if they could present on February 12th, and they're, they're in. Oh, oh, nice. Bring it on. So this would be for the, the change would be for the class of, that's eighth graders now. Is that okay? Thank yeah. you. Just making sure all the math was mathing there in my brain. <laughs> okay. And we'll we'll over communicate that too if if it didn't change is coming. So. Perfect. Okay. Anything else we need to address before we move into executive session? Well, in that case, I would take a vote. All right, we take a motion. Take a vote. Good work. <laughs> move to we'll take that too. All right. The board goes into ah. executive session. Oh, I thought we read that after we did that. Okay. Where there? Okay, I was on the wrong thing. The board reserves the right to move oh. into closed session to protect the public interest or needless injury to the reputation of an individual for any action item listed on the agenda. The board may, at its discretion, change the order of the agenda to accommodate unforeseen issues related to the agenda item. Now I would take that lovely motion. I'll move that the board goes into executive session. Second. Excellent. And we are moving into executive session to discuss negotiations. We've got Liz on the motion and Mary on the second. And please call the vote. Mrs. Richards? Aye. Uh, Mrs. Huff? Aye. Ms. Rorty? Aye. Mrs. Kramer? Aye. Mrs. Krause? Aye. And Mrs. Willie? Aye. Okay, you got a few. All right. This is the place where I usually say, please clear the gallery, but there's nobody here. So. <laughs> 